What's up guys, Andrea Halstead here with episode 46, to degree or not to degree? That is the question that Andrea and I are going to answer for you today on this degree in the cam video. And we're not going to reinvent the wheel, we're not going to take the cam out, put it all back in and show you how to degree it. Basically we're going to show you how to check it to be degreed in and then we'll kind of give it an insight on what you do to change that and the relationship it has. But what I want to do really for this video is give you an explanation of why you're degreeing the cam in and what's the advantages of having it degreed in in regards to the intake lobe center line. Do you want a tight one at 106 or does it need to be at 109 or 110? So these are what I'm going to try to give you some insight on. Andrew's going to tear this down. We were checking the piston to valve clearance and talking about another project we got going for that her pro stock motor. Uh, a buddy of mine, Brian Gilchrist, has a 354 cubic inch Cleveland just with a single dominator and a strip dominator intake it was making 615 horse at eight grand so we're going to use that as our basis we'll get back on that topic first but let me kind of tell you what we're trying to achieve with this video when you degree your cam in what you're doing is you're trying to figure out where you want that intake valve open and closing in relationship the cam and the crank together because what's that, what that does is, it's gonna give you the optimal cylinder pressure, the optimal filling, and the best scavenging. And that's what you wanna do when you degree that cam in. So when you get a cam sheet like mine here, and I'll show you a picture of this. This is a 109 intake separation angle. You can't change that, but you can change what it's degreed in at in regards to the intake lobe center line. In this case, they want it advanced three degrees to 106. I can tell you right now, this is in a four degrees advanced since it was built back in 2013. And it's probably because when I checked it, you can't get any closer unless you had a belt drive or a veneer drive to adjust it for one degree. So let me kind of get this head off and then she's gonna keep going and we can talk about what we're gonna find out. And in case you haven't seen this in a while, it's looking good. So the main thing you want to be is on top dead center. And you do that by using a piston stop, by putting it in a spark plug hole. You can see that on the internet. Nice magnetic base with a dial indicator I got from that benchmark Bob. But a piston stop goes in here. You screw it in until it touches the piston when you're close to where you think top dead center is. Turn it back 180. You can split the difference and come up with top dead center. Or you can use a deck bridge with a dial indicator. I actually checked it both ways on this to make sure that I was in the right top dead center aspect 100% and it is it's perfect so she's setting that up and, and the thing that you want to make sure is you want to make sure that it's at 90 degrees so when you're measuring things you're not having things skewed or crooked so that's one thing you set up ahead of time now the main thing that we're going to talk about and why is it important to put this cam in at 106 degree intake lobe center line is because if it's a Cleveland it's not gonna run very good if it's in at 110 degree intake lobe center line. They just don't work well. They don't build cylinder pressure. They don't scavenge correctly. And that's the idea or the, the, the brains of the engine is the camshaft. And the manufacturer that makes that cam is gonna use your cylinder head data where they should be if you're gonna get a custom cam and they're gonna give you the parameters. So the sheet here is gonna tell you what they want it put in to make the most power, at least the best optimal outcome. And you try to put it in as close as you can to that 106 because that's where that engine's making the power so that area that we're changing that that period of time is when that piston is the closest to the exhaust valve okay and then that piston is coming up on the exhaust stroke that in that exhaust valve is closing it and that piston is chasing it and when it flips up around to start coming and drawing off the intake valve and drawing in the intake charge air fuel mixture that's when they're the closest 10 degrees before top dead center and 10 degrees after for the intake valve. That's the period right there that we're working with when you're degreeing in the cam. You're trying to figure out when you want that intake valve to open and close. And that's, like I said, affects the scavenging, the cylinder pressure and the cylinder filling. And with a Cleveland, you want that stuff to start early because those ports are so big, they need a lot of velocity to get that flowing. Cleveland's are not gonna run good at 2,500 or three grand. You know, they need to be at six grand to be starting flowing. 
five grand. That's when you're gonna see that port start to work. That's why they stuff them to increase the velocity so they have more low end. But they also have to have the cam in in the correct position. With that said, we're gonna run through how to degree the cam in. Andrew's gonna write down the information. I'll do the quick measurements. You'll see how easy it is. Because no one explains this and what you're doing in an easy manner, at least not for me. So hopefully you get something out of this. So let's check the degree of this cam, what it's degreed in at. Here's our sheet here, and I showed you that before. We're measuring things at 50 thousandths of valve lift. We're not at 20 thousandths like advertised type stuff. So this is at 50 thousandths. That way everyone's at the same page. All the readings are the same when you go to choose a cam. You got a street cam for a Cleveland. You're not gonna put a 270 degree cam in there for the street. You know, you could if you put the right combination with it. I've driven this on a street. But you build it accordingly to what your goal is. So in this case, it's got the intake duration is 273 at 50 thousandths. Exhaust is 284 thousandths. Okay, at 50 thousandths. The lobe lift is 430 thousandths times the rocker ratio should give you a 744 and on the exhaust is 727. Here's what we're looking for right now. We're looking for the timing events at 50 thousandths. When the intake opens, which is 30.5 degrees, and when it closes, 62.5. The opening and closing points of your intake and exhaust plus 180 is your duration at 050. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the intake lobe center. We're going to go to 50 thousandths of the intake valve opening. So remember here, the exhaust valve is going to open first. The dial indicator is at zero. It's going to start coming up. Now it's opening up. It's coming to 60. And we're going to look at our gauge. And we're at 50 thousandths. So we're going to read what the degree wheel says. And that's when our intake valve opens at 50 thousandths. Write that down. So looking at this right now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say it's 31.5. And that's the intake valve opening. Yep, perfect. It's supposed to be 30.5, so it's advanced a little bit. Let's see what we got. Now, the next thing we're going to do, let's go to max cam lift. Now, according to what this cam sheet was, was 430 thousandths. So let's see where we're at. There's 50 thousandths. There's 100 thousandths. Two, three, four. Now, here we go. Now we're coming up to max low lift because 30 thousandths is right here. And we're at like 21, 22. There's 25, 26, 27. And that's about 27. And I went past. If you ever go past, just back it up and then go back forward. So you got the chain under tension when you're measuring it. So we're going to call that 427 thousandths. So let's write that down here. Max lift, 420. Yep, that's perfect. So now that we know what it is, max lift, and we know it, it's supposed to be 430. It's, it's just a reground cam. Maybe that's different. There's lots of different variables. It's not going to make much difference right now. We want to zero our gauge. Now remember, we want to go 50 thousandths before the cam lobe, the, the top of the lobe and 50 after. You add those two together and that's going to be your intake lobe center line. So we got it at zero degrees. Let's back it off 50 thousandths. There's 50 thousandths, but we're going backwards and we want it to be forward under tension. So we're even going to go back further. Now we're going to come up Fifty thousandths. We're going to read the degree wheel. Dead nuts. Sixty. Right there. Now we want to turn it back fifty thousandths. So we're going to go back to max cam lift. Which is right there. Now we're going to go back fifty thousandths. Now remember, I always turn the direction of the rotation of the motor to keep tension on the chain. Bingo. That's 150 right there. So 150, there it is. So she's gonna add up 50 thousandths before, which was 60. 60, 150 now, 
and divide by two, and that's our intake lobe center line. What's it come up to? 105. 105, there it is, you can't beat that. Now let's just keep turning it over and measure, we want 50 thousandths before the intake valve closes. So I'll just keep going until the dial indicator stops, that means the valve's closed, back it up 50 thousandths. And I'm gonna say right about there is where it's gonna be. I'll put it at zero degrees. Now back it off 50 thousandths and see where you're at. Because that's 50 thousandths before the intake valve closes. So we're backing it off. There's 50 thousandths right there. But remember, we wanna go back further so it's under tension. There you go. And we're going to count backwards. We got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61.5. Yep, 61.5. So you add up the intake opening and intake closing points at 180 degrees, and that gives you a duration of the intake at 050. So let's see what do we have. Um, that's 273. There it is. 273 at 050. So this cam's in is about as good as it's gonna get. I can't get any closer unless I wanted to go with, like I said, belt drive or veneer drive. And that's the importance of checking the cam when you put it in to make sure that you got it degreed where they want it put in. Otherwise, you're losing horsepower. You're, you're leaving stuff on the table. You're not getting the maximum from that combination. So make sure you degree that cam in. It's really not that hard. Um, I have to say, I've, like I said, I saw a lot of videos with it that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Hopefully this makes a lot of sense to you. And you can follow along and keep going with this Cleveland build. I appreciate my wife coming here, Andrea, joining me with this degree in the cam. Um, we, it, it's kind of a, a, a big feat that we're gonna try to pull off is build these two motors together with you and Elena and me and Izzy. But like I said, we got a motor to start with for you that's already proven combination so we're good with it. So what our plan is to build a pro stock motor, her and Elena, with this lion with the twin dominators out of 354 cubic inch Cleveland. Now that Cleveland made 615 horsepower at eight grand before. So that's gonna be an interesting combination. And then we'll start working on the XC. We'll get the piston to valve clearance done on this. And then I'm gonna hopefully try doing the uh, mid lift geometry video. Maybe you can help me with that, too. Definitely a learning experience. It is a learning experience, and I'm glad that you take the opportunity to spend some time with me to learn this. And hopefully the kids are, too. But they're kind of, they're not into it as, as much as I am. <laughs> I know you're kind of getting into it if you can get into a 69 Mustang, right? I guess this is my only way to get my Eleanor. There it is. She'd like to have an Eleanor. Now, I will tell you, Eric Johnson, my buddy from Columbus, offered me that 69 Mustang with a Jericho four-speed. So we might put that her motor in it and see what that thing can do at the strip. But I definitely want to do, get, the, get it to the dyno. Get this one and get hers. And then I'll start working on the track boss, which is at Tim Myers getting done. And get the XE block that I have going. I'm working on a fuel system for this. I've been talking to Orm Brothers. I got a list I got to get ordered for because I'm switching all to PTFE. And someone had talked to me about the fuel system on this, which originally was dash 10 to dash 8 all the way to the front of the car and a dash 8 return line. I think I'm going with dash 12, what I had before, and dash 10 all the way to the front and a return line. Keep it all the same. I don't know why. It just feels like the right thing to do. Dash 8 just seems like it's too small compared to what I've used before. So let me just stick with what I've used in the past. And like that, you always say. Do what works for you. Exactly right. What works for you. And I've been saying that for as long as I've been doing these videos. you got to do what works for you and your combination. So I just give you what helps me out. Maybe this, a lot of this stuff is universal, just like the camshaft. You know, I don't know what Chevy's like. They may want a 106 intake center line. I don't know. And as your cylinder heads improve with more efficiency and flow, then you're going to want more of a separation angle. Then you're going to look at a 111 or 112. That's what those engines that are making 800, 900 horsepower have for a separation angle. They're in the 
111 range or 112. But we're old school, so that's what we're going to stick with. And uh, the heads, the blue thunders at Darren Morgan's, he's going to start working on that. The secret A3 intake that I had got cleaned by Scott Miller. He does great work. That's going to Morgan to get done. So we're getting along. We just got to keep going and pressing forward. So I appreciate you stopping by Drag Boss Garage with Andrea Halstead. Subscribe and share. There it is. Subscribe and share. And degree that camshaft in. Because I hear Cleveland's make power.